In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Glidewell inclusive abutment to do a single unit screw retained crown. So in the administration phase, uh, since you're not technically doing an abutment, you're using the Glidewell tie base, you don't designate it as an abutment, you simply designate it as a crown, biogeneric, it's going to be on tooth number six. We're going to choose our material, which is Emacs, and hit OK. So if we move on to the images, just like any other abutment case that I'm going to do, I'm going to take the same four catalogs. We'll take the lower jaw, the opposing, the upper jaw, which is going to be the Glidewell titanium base. Just image that directly. I uh, image this directly in the mouth. The buckle bite, and also the gingiva mask. Okay, so those are the four sets of images that you'll take. We'll move on to the model phase. Okay, so we're in the, the initial model phase. You can see here uh, why the Glidewell 6mm tie base really works well. It uh, has a very flat parallel wall. It's a very parallel uh, uh, titanium base, actually. So much so, if you look from the occlusal, it's very difficult to see the margins. So my experience with this 6mm titanium base is, actually, when you mill a crown, it's almost very difficult for it to seat all the way. But as soon as you create the screw axis hole, then it seats. So most of the time, it's actually binding right here at this area. You can see I use the replace function in the edit model to go ahead and fill in the top of that. If you're not familiar with that, we've got many videos on using the replace function to fill in the top of the titanium uh, base. So once you're done with this step, you do the buckle bite, you set the model axis, we'll go on to the next step. The actual hardest part of using this glide wheel, especially the smaller ones, I believe this is a, a 4, uh, Astro 4.0, um, the hardest part is actually drawing the margins because you can't really see them. So you, you just basically got to kind of go around and quickly just do the best you can and then edit it as necessary. So you can see we fell off uh, in a couple different areas here. Okay, so you got your margins drawn. You'll define your restoration axis, which uh, in this case is right on the button. We don't have to change that at all. We'll hit OK and move forward to the parameter screen. Now the nice thing about the parameters is, is my experience with people when they do uh, stock abutments is they're always trying to monkey around with, do I have veneer mill? What's my spacer? How do I get a correct fit? Like I said, on this Glidewell titanium base, uh, it's so parallel and has that long, flat, anti-rotational wall that you don't need to alter really anything at all. So I'm typically going to do the same exact parameters that I do for a normal crown. So the spacer of 120, I usually have a minus 50 occlusal offset, my proximal contact strength, occlusal contact strength. Uh, we'll check our minimal thickness. Uh, same as you normally would do. I, I tend to keep it pretty low for my initial proposal. Margin thickness, uh, I think 100 is OK. And we'll go ahead and OK it and get our initial proposal. So as you can see, my initial proposal is, is very poor. I remember this uh, very vividly when I got this proposal. Um, so whenever I get a proposal that's this far off, I'm not going to mess around with it much in the software. I'm going to go ahead and use my uh, recalculate, unadapted, and then go ahead and use my move tool to, to manipulate this crown into the correct position. You can use your space bar to toggle up and down between the, the, the position and rotate tool just to kind of get it in the ballpark. Okay, I can see that the contacts is too wide mesial distally, so we'll go ahead and we'll close out of that, go to our dimension tool, dimension mesial distally, and go ahead and just narrow that up just a little bit. So once you kind of got it close, which I would say that we do, We'll go ahead and rec actually recalculate the proposal and get our new proposal. Okay, so here's my new proposal. You can see how well that worked. And, and now typically what I'm going to do is just going to take my circular shape tool and just start working on some of these issues. You know, obviously our occlusion's high. We've got minimal thickness issues that we can correct here. And just start forming it. Now notice I'm not putting the tissue up yet. I just want to get it a little closer. And then we can go ahead 
and put our tissue up with display objects, put our upper gingiva on. You can see I'm gonna have no real issue with the emergence profile. I definitely wanna bulk out that cervical bulge a little bit here. Get it pretty close. Now I may turn the tissue off and turn the model off and just make sure that I take my smooth tool and smooth out this emergence profile just a little bit. You can see I've got some minimal thickness issues that I have to correct. But basically you get the you get the point. So the greatest thing about actually doing it with the in-lab software is you have the ability uh, to, to put up your gingiva. You can control the emergence profile. It's basically just like doing a biogeneric crown. Okay, so let's just say for argument's sake that this uh, proposal is done. Now the next thing that we have to do is form our screw access hole. So how we're going to do this in the software is let's go ahead and turn our restoration transparent. Let's go ahead and turn off our minimal thickness. Go to view options. Let's get it to the path of the milling insertion on the occlusal. Right click, choose reduce, and simply draw a line around where you want that access hole to be. Okay, now we're going to take this reduction strength, we're going to reduce it all the way to 1.5 as far as we can go. We'll turn off our reduction tool, go back to display objects, and make our restoration back to uh, take it off the transparency. So now we've got exactly where that screw access hole needs to go. It's nice and defined like it used to be with 3.8 using that uh, shape tool. Now if you want to make it a little bit deeper, now you can take your circular shape tool, go right in the middle with, and just move it down a little bit. Okay? And that's all you really need to do. You can, you can actually uh, get it pretty close just with that reduction tool. You can see I accidentally went up, not down, but you get the point. And when you make that nice outline, it's going to confine that circular shape tool to within that hole, so you don't really have to worry about it too much. Okay? So once you're done with that, we'll go to the mill preview. And you're all set to, to mill your screw retained crown. Now, like I said, you're going to have to do two things. Uh, when you go ahead and try to seat this on your Glidewell titanium base, it's most definitely going to bind here at uh, right at uh, where it meets the titanium base. It's just too long and too parallel. We can actually go ahead and check with the model box, and it, and it appears as if it's not binding, but trust me when I say that in this case it binded up here towards the top. However, once you take your burr and you drill through uh, to make sure your driver fits through there, it's going to seat all the way. So if you get worried that it doesn't seat right away, just make your screw access hole and it will seat right away. So that's how I would use the Glidewell Titanium Base System to make uh, my temporary crowns and a permanent screw attained crown.